Namaste. The Vedanga, limbs of the Veda, are six auxiliary disciplines of Hinduism that developed in ancient times and have been connected with the study of the Vedas. Vedas, as I have told you in earlier videos, are known as Shruti, whereas Vedangas are a part of Smriti. Smriti means that which is remember. These are usually attributed to an author traditionally written down. The Smriti literature includes the six Vedangas, the Upvedas, the epics, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the Dharma Sutras, Dharma Shastras, Arth Shastra, the Puranas, Bhashyas, and such other ones. To make the spiritual and ritual concepts of the Vedas easily understandable, the Rishis developed the Vedangas known as the limbs of the Vedas. They help to understand Ved mantras completely and in depth. In case there is a difference between the two, Vedas will always prevail over the Vedangas. Mundan Upanishad mentions six Vedangas as follows. Shiksha or phonetics or pronunciation, Kalp or ritual, Vyagaran or grammar, Nirukt or etymology, Chandas or meter, Jyotish or astronomy. Additionally, the idea of Vedang is that Vyakaran is the mouth of Vedas, Jyotish is eye, Nirukt is ear, Chan is leg, Shiksha is nose, and Kal is hands. Yes. They are the Angas, Angas means body parts of Vedas, and hence they are known as Vedangas. First among these is Shiksha. Shiksha lays down the rules of phonetics, pronunciation, sound, duration of utterance of each syllable, euphony. The goal is to achieve correct pronunciation and articulation through Akshara Shuddhi, that is syllable purity, Swara Shuddhi, that is tonal or pitch purity, Matra Shuddhi, durational purity, Balam, that is force of articulation, Samam, that is evenness and sudden, that is continuity. It intends to train the students in the art and science of articulation of words and syllables so that they can chant the Vedic hymns perfectly. The oldest phonetic textbooks are the Pratishakyas, describing pronunciation, intonation, as well as the rules of Sandhi. Sandhi means word combination. Phonetics is most important in the case of the Vedic language because we see that change in sounds leads to change in results and effect. The vibrations generated by sounds are considered to possess immense power of Hindu mysticism known as Akshar Brahma. Sound is the supreme spirit. Next is Kalp. Kalp means ritual instruction. Kalp is called the arms of the Vedkush. Kalp deals with the practical, ceremonial, sacrificial and ritual aspect of the Vedas. Technically, it is the applied science of the Vedas. The method and the manner in which the sacrificial ceremonies and daily household rituals have to be performed are established in a compendium of sutras or aphorisms known as Kalp Sutras. Kalp literally means sacred rule or law or ordinance and sutra means a thread. Sutras are threads of knowledge or short statements used as memorial rules. In the absence of written language, the sutras acted as mental hooks and helped the students remember the intricacies of performing wedding sacrifices and observing the daily rituals. Kalp sutras are usually divided into the Shra sutras, which are based on the Shruti, and Smrit sutras based on the Smriti tradition. Shra Sutras prescribe rules for the performance of different types of sacrifices and rituals. The amount of fees to be paid to the priest and the type of penances to be practiced in case of violation. The Sulva Sutra 
also known as the Salva Sutra, deal with the mathematical methodology to construct alter geometries for the Vedic rituals. The Sanskrit word Salva means God, and these texts are means of the God. The Shra Sutras were probably composed around the 6th century BC, same time during which some of the Swara Sutras were also composed. The Swara Sutras are divided into Graha Sutras and Dharma Sutras. The Graha Sutras prescribe domestic rules and rights for the three upper castes, Brahmins, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. In addition to the duties and responsibilities meant for them as householders so that they can uphold the dharma and lead an ideal life in harmony with truths expounded in the Vedas. The Dharma Sutras deal with the code of conduct and duties and responsibilities of various castes within the framework of the four Purusharthas. Purusharthas are the four aims of life and for ashrams. Ashram means the four stages of life. They also suggest the norms for appropriate social and religious behavior for both men and women, norms of marriage, study and sexual union and punishments in case of violation. This is Vyakaran. Vyakaran means grammar and linguistic analysis. Vyakaran or grammar is necessary for understanding of the Veda. It is called the mouth of the Vedas. It deals with Sanskrit grammar or the analysis and composition of words, word formation, root words and complex sentence structures. Thus, Vyakaran provides usual insights into the usage of words and sentences leading to the mastery of the language. The old Vedan texts on Vyakarana are entirely lost today. In the Aranyaks, we find some technical terms of grammar. The only representative of this Veda is the Ashtadhyay of Padini, which belongs to a later period, probably between the 5th and 6th century BC. The Ashtadhyay contains about 4,000 sutras. Next is Nirukh. Nirukt means etymology and is known as the ear of the Vedagurush. It explains the reason why a particular word has been used that is the meaning of usage. Technically, it deals with the difficult and obscure words of a dictionary whose analysis and interpretation is vital to the study and understanding of the Vedas which are deplete in mysterious symbolism not usually understood by all. The most authoritative exponent of this branch of study is Yakshacharya, a Sanskrit grammarian and master of Sanskrit etymology who lived before Panini. He is remembered for his monumental work called Niru, which is an excellent commentary of the obscure words found in the Nigantu, Nigantu is dictionary of his time. Since many Sanskrit words can be split into more than one way and the Vedas contain many obscure and unknown words, an in-depth study of Niru will help students discover the latent or hidden meaning of the Vedas and understand their linguistic and philosophical significance. Next is Chand or Meter. Chand is regarded as the feet of the Vedas. Each mantra of the Veda has a special chanda just as it has a presiding deity. The chanda is designed for the purpose of securing the proper reading and reciting of Vedic texts. Depending upon the number of syllables used, a pun may be of the length of 8, 11 or 12 syllables known as Gayatri, Drishtu and Jagati respective. There are other metrical schemes and further variations in the classification of the meter depending upon different criteria. The discussion of which I have done in detail in my other video, the Gayatri Mantra, where I have described in detail all the meters used at that time 
and how the syllables and the pad were counted and why gayatri mantra became gayatri mantra because the meter used for the gayatri mantra is gayatri chand so if you want to know in detail about the chandas please refer to the other video the gayatri mantra the knowledge of the chand proved useful in the composition of the smriti literature it also played an important role in the emergence of classical indian music and sanskrit poetry besides providing a framework of reference for compositions in other languages chanda shastra of pingala is considered to be the oldest text available on the subject it was probably composed between 6th and 5th century bc in sanskrit the metrical unit is known as pad chandas help us to ensure the form of the mantra no alteration to this can be detected since it would disturb the spiritual significance of the mantra itself next is jyotish jyotish is called the eye of the vedas jyotish deals with the astronomical and astrological aspects of fixing auspicious date and time to perform various vedic rites and rituals there are two versions the arch jyotish and the yajur jyotish one belongs to the rigveda and other to the yajurveda according to tradition sage bhrugu is said to be the first person who perfected the knowledge of jyotish and built a record of the natal charts of every human being who was to be born of jyotish veda is not to teach astronomy but to convey such knowledge of the heavenly bodies as is necessary for fixing the days and hours of the vedic sacrifices it gives some rules for calculating and fixing time for sacrifices it is unfortunate that there is no work available at present dealing with ancient vedic astronomy in the sutra style only we have a small textbook called jyotish veda of vedic astronomy in verses in two recensions and generally maharshi lakad is regarded author to this veda of jyotish later we find many sanskrit treatises on astronomy and mathematical calculations bhaskaracharya varaha mehr and aryabhat are known ancient scholars conversant with these scientific subjects the brahmadaranya upanishad mentions vedans as an integral part of the brahman's layer of the vedic text it is unclear when the list of six vedangas were first conceptualized the vedangas likely developed towards the end of the vedic period around or after the middle of the first millennium bce an early text of the genre in the ligantu by yakshacharya dated to roughly the 5th century BC definitely the vedangas provide vitality to the vedas just as the limbs of the hip if you want to know more about the vedas please refer to the entire playlist the vedic literature if you have not subscribed the video please subscribe the video so that you can get all the videos made on ancient indian history thank you